there's like two different mentalities going around right now. There are the people that are really missing human connection uh, and they're kind of looking at their phones going, man, I can't believe I spend this much time on my phone. I really wish that I could just see somebody right now. And uh, this is what we have right now is artists and musicians. I see a lot of a lot of producers doing little DJ sets and doing cool things and online parties. So yeah, thanks for saying that. Um, that's kind of why I wanted to do this. Last time was kind of a tutorial heavy webinar and this time I just I just kind of wanted to have a hangout. Um, so any questions, comments, smart remarks or emotional outbursts really at all. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to paint and talk to Tanya. Tanya all right. Well, we do first. have one question, and I hope I'm saying the name right, Lorian. You can correct me if I said that wrong. Um, they were obviously in your webinar and are very curious, or maybe not, um, but the image that we used to promote this session, the butterfly image, wondering how you created the smooth color gradients in that image. That is an excellent question. I can't remember. Um, uh, Corel has a gradient tool. Um, it would be under paint bucket. Oh, no, it's right here. We separated it this time. Around. So Corel has a gradient tool um, that you can play around with. You can add different colors and whatnot and change those. But I think with that one, if I can get out of this, uh, no, I don't want to commit. Um, oh, yeah, don't ruin your painting. <laughs> uh, so I would take an overlay layer like this right here. Uh, as you can see, there's just a luminosity there. Um, and I would just go down the color spectrum. And if you want smooth grading, you definitely want to use a soft airbrush type of tool. And then you can go from there and we'll make this part green, make this part turquoise, and maybe we'll- Okay, that is very cool. Blue right there. And this is in oil painting, this would be glazing. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, you can, and it, that's really just a a layer option right here. So this is an overlay layer where my mouse is, overlay. Usually the default, you, no, we want overlay. Um, and then there's just color, which it will doesn't really matter what value. It You know, red's always going to be red, green's always going to be green. With overlay, you can play with luminosity. So this is like a, like a line, but you can make it a much lighter line. You can make it a more saturated line. And so that's pretty much all I did. I think all that's right, perfection. <laughs> um, Debbie is wondering, how do you make brushes? How do you make this brushes? This is a loaded one. Um, there are, what I'll do, if I really want to make brushes, I mean, Corel has an insane amount of brushes. It's a little overwhelming, even to me. Um, but you pick one, let's say, I want this one, and you make sure that your uh, brush control panel is open. And there's different options for you. So there's stroke preview, there's captured. You can you, you play with this essentially. So I can make a stroke with this. There we go. So that's what it looks like now. If we want, we can make it a, a different method of how you do that. We can make it a watercolor brush. Um, 
there are a lot of different uh we can make it even particle there's a there's there's a ton of way it, it it's all under your uh your brush controls and it's really it gets really intricate but you start with one of the basics something that you like um and then you just manipulate it from that point what's that big it looks like i have an artifact on my piece here But the particles are really fun to manipulate too. I mean, essentially making a brush is any kind of tweak that you even make in the property bar from yes. starting from an original brush. So you can go really deep or keep it simple. All right. I'm wondering why I had this artifact here. Yeah. I don't know. I don't need to save. I'm just going to reopen it. All right, there we go. And we're back. <laughs> Debbie just asked, how do you save it? How would you save your file? Or do you typically say, I see that you have PSD. Yeah. Uh, I'll typically save it as a PSD because Photoshop allows you to uh, much quicker, quickly uh, edit what you're doing. So if I make a painting and I want to edit it, I want to do a, you know, uh, just recolor it or warp it or do just an overall edit and manipulate it um, like you would a photo, like a photo. Um, then you can do that because Photoshop doesn't accept uh, Corel RIF files. There we go. So what is this that you're painting here? Um, I'm really inspired by, recently I'm, I'm inspired by Shiva uh, and just Hindu mythology in general. Uh, I feel like Hindu mythology is less literal and more of a comic book you know it's it's mm -hmm. all these characters have these super ha powers and have all these super epic stories um so i guess it's my version of like what i prefer when it comes to superhero franchises i guess <laughs> it's not a franchise it's a it's a religion but it's all philosophical and i think that's the thing i, I enjoy the most about it and uh, Shiva is kind of a, there, there's many different Shiva's incarnations. I don't want to get too into it, but um, Shiva's kind of the, is the universe. So Shiva's all of us is the, he's everywhere. And this pose, I do want to paint a little person down here. There's this story where this little this little demon who represents spiritual ignorance um, wants to terrorize humanity and make everyone ignorant. And Shiva just dances on top of that demon forever for eternity. He doesn't want to he doesn't want to kill him, kill that demon because you need spiritual ignorance to become spiritually enlightened. And I thought that was a really cool, interesting way, interesting thing. You don't want to, 
the joy of enlightenment is becoming enlightened. And to become enlightened, you must first be ignorant. And so it's accepting that you're ignorant and then enjoying that journey of becoming enlightened. I just, I think that's, I don't know of any Western story that's, that's like that. Neither do I. And I was not aware of that before. That's very cool. Yeah. And of course, there's all the, the Hindu epics that um, are difficult for me to uh, understand because they're just so wild. But uh, I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm learning. I'm, I'm, I'm having a, a great interest in Hindu culture. But I am pretty ignorant to it. <laughs> At the same time. I am as well. The only experience I've had is um, going to a funeral, a Hindu ceremony. And that was very enlightening for me. Wow. Like nothing I had seen before. What was that like? Very different <laughs> from <laughs> anything that I had experienced before. Um, because... I don't even know if I want to get into it right now, Brian. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's quite the ceremony that takes place and it, it's um it was amazing. It's just not something that I would I was used to because they had not really preserved the body. So mm -hmm. you do a whole ceremony around the body and yeah, it was um was a brand new experience for me. Yeah, uh, those cultures that um, have different ways of accepting death, life and death and understanding that balance have always really fascinated, fascinated me too. We were talking about traveling earlier uh, and I traveled all through Mexico um, in the uh, early 2000s and Probably around 2008, I went all all around Mexico, um, and they have a very interesting relationship with life and death, and celebrating that. Um, and they don't, I mean, they mourn and they're sad, but they they accept that their life kind of revolves around death and doing whatever you can in your lifetime to make an impact and be remembered. And they honor that in such a crazy way. I'm sure a lot of people here have heard of the Day of the Dead. Um, and that was something that really inspired me. And uh, I feel like so far, the the Hindu perspective is something similar, where a funeral is more of a celebration of life than it is a a mourning of loss. And where was this funeral that you went to? What location? Was it in Chicago? No, it was in New Jersey. Mm. And I mean, the whole um, the whole experience itself was traumatic for me, which is why I find hard to put it into words. Because oh. my friend had been missing for not a super long time, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, oh, let's see. Anna is wondering if you can explain different ways of masking and selection. Sure. Uh, let's try and find, oh, this is a perfect thing right here. So she usually has a cobra around his arm, wrist, but I really don't want to draw a cobra. I want this to be more representational. Um, so what I do, because 
I have a graphics tablet that I'm really good at using is I'll press L, which gets the lasso, and I will just make that selection right there. Um, that's the quickest way to do it. It's that easy. And then you can just fill that in. You can do oops, shift I, select uh, invert selection, control I, that's what I thought it was. And then you can paint anywhere outside of that to make a nice clean selection. If you want to get any more accurate, if you if there are basic shapes, you can of course use things like this, square tools. You know, uh, <laughs> that might help you out. Uh, and I think that's M. Yeah. Or circles. And then if you want to add to the selection you already have, go up to here, add. And then you can add to your circle. Oh, that might not have been the best circle, so you can minus from it. And that's how I did this moon up here to get that clean shape. And then, of course, the most accurate you can get, if you really want to go crazy, is you can use the pen tool, which is just P. And this uses anchor points that you manipulate. Now, in regards to selections, I'm trying to scroll back here. Um, Peter is wondering, and this should be fairly simple, but the, the selection or the marching ants, how do you ensure that they don't go outside of your selection? Because I know that you can extend the selection or detract it. Mm -hmm. um, so in anything that I select, so, oh, sorry, let's just do that. So make sure it goes, out. it's always going to be in here. The question is, how about you make sh sure they don't go out of this selection? Yeah, do I, I don't know if the question is, sometimes a feather can be applied. Yeah. So sure. I don't know if maybe that's what's happening to Peter. Um, but in Painter, that shouldn't happen unless you make that kind of choice. Correct. Yeah. Uh, is it bleed? No. Uh, there is a yeah, feather. Yeah, I think it's under the effects menu. So it's not even, I'm not even sure yeah. if it's in the property bar to feather it out. I can't remember the last time I used a feather. So. <laughs> yeah, sorry. no worries. So by yeah. default in Painter, it should just select exactly like what he just circled there. Yeah, and then I want to add on here so then I can start spraying in there. And that's, I think that's the beauty of uh, selections is uh, the airbrush. I'll, I'll just start making this selection. I want to make this very clean. Do you ever create your own color palettes? Marie is wondering, she was specifically talking about um, a certain type of pastels. And if she were to have like a picture of that, can you easily convert that into a color palette? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know you can take an image and you could convert it into, it's like a color set. Uh, yeah, I, you don't usually do swatches unless it's vector. Uh, so if you have an image that you want to import, um, let's say the image has 
these colors in them. We can make some pastel like colors. So it's got these images, these colors in it. And it's going to be on its own layer. And what you can do is pull down I, oops, the eyedropper tool right here. And so that's always going to select that. Uh, and that's usually what I do. So now I can start painting with that color. Oh, I'm sorry, it's D. D is the eyedropper tool. Um, and you just easily select There's those. a lot of different ways to do it. it you yeah. could also just take the image and turn it into a color set. And yeah, so there's, you can make a mixer pad. All kinds yeah. Of things. yeah, I I usually just go to the color wheel. Um, that's just what I've been doing for years. And I don't typically play with photos in Corel. Um, because uh, I'm a painter, so. Yep. Um, Steve is wondering, and I know that you print your artwork. He's saying that he has an Epson Sure Color P600, and let's see, he has to make his artwork very vivid for the print. Mm -hmm. He uses color proofing on Painter. Okay, wait. That has to really uh, okay, Steve, I'm not sure about the last sentences in here. I think he's just having issues with color proofing and getting the colors out of Painter to match what he'd like in print. Do you have any suggestions? Um, nope. <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, I think it might, it may have to do, Steve, with Painter is an RGB color set if you're printing the CMYK. Um, I'm not familiar with the particular kind of printer, but a lot of people end up, when they need to convert from RGB to CMYK, they go to Photoshop and do that conversion. But if you have any more information, go ahead and put it in the questions panel for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I there, I, I really, it's, I really have to look at the file to really make a diagno, uh, diagnose the issue. But uh, I think you're probably right. Um, oh, I'm not with the eraser. Derp. Um, I think you're probably right that Corel is uh, RGB and he's using a CMYK printer. So you might want to put that in Photoshop. I'll wait and see if he posts something else in here. What brush were you using when you were doing the, it looked like an airbrush. I still kind of see parts of it there. Yeah, that's a smooth spray. It is an under airbrush. This is what made me start using Corel Painter in 2011, was this airbrush. Uh, it's so difficult to find these kinds of particles in other software it's just so nice and so and while you're drawing there i had some other people chime in about the feather mm -hmm. <laughs> they said it's under the select menu so mm -hmm. for those of you that were wondering um select feather right there we did it Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I was wrong. I was thinking effects. I can't memorize everything. Sorry, I'm just playing with the airbrush now. It's so nice. Okay, Dorothy is looking to publish an alphabet coloring book and mm -hmm. wants to know, oh, it just moved on me because people are entering questions, sorry. Um, how can I draw the whole page with ho hollow letters? With letters? 
Is that what was the question? How can I draw the whole page hollow letters? I can draw. Kind of depends on if you're using the text tool or if you're hand drawing. I. How can you yes, draw that's a tough page? one. Hollow letters. Hollow, like empty. So if I were to just use the text tool to put an A and not fill it, mm. and then I could just have like a selection and paint in it. I'm not sure if that's see, what, I'll that. wait and see if Dorothy comes back with anything. Oops, I put too big of a space there. So there's my type. And we can put an effect on this. I usually don't use the type in Painter. Uh, burn equalize. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't know about that. I would. Think, I would imagine you could put a stroke around this. Um, or even I don't know if you could just do a select and it would select the edges and you could paint inside of them without even having to do you know a yeah, stroke. Select it there. Yeah, yeah, just like that. So if you wanted to paint inside it, so now you have your selection, you can hide that text layer. And then oops, we're still on our text. And now you can just paint inside of here. Oops. You know, whatever you want. <clears throat> All right, nice. Let's see. Hey, Michelle Webb. Um, Michelle's on here, and she's just commenting back to when we were talking about printing. Um, it might even help to go into the print settings and the color profiles and make sure that the profile that you're using matches your output as well. So there is color proofing in Painter. Hmm. That's good to know. I think I, the default I, is um, Adobe RGB. I forget. I could pop open Painter and look. I actually work in print production. Um, and uh, it's good to know with Painter. We don't use Painter for any printing, but... It's interesting to know. And then William is commenting as well that sometimes it's hard to convert from RGB to CMYK, but if you can print with a Giclée, printer, then that tends to fix the issues. So lots of comments and experience with printing from Painter, so thanks everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm going to probably nerd out and try it out afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Peter is wondering, when you use the pattern to paint with, is there a way to change the color of the preset? Like when you use the tire pattern, which had orange and black colors, in the mm -hmm. last drawing of the butterfly. Um, I would I think you're referring to the, this pattern. And then you want me to, or you're wondering if I can change this pattern. Come on, what's going on here? Well, it doesn't want me to do that pattern, I guess. Oh, I'm not on the brush. Okay, there we go. Um, and you want me to change that color? Uh, there's an easy way, really quick way, Control-Shift-A. But since this has no value, or a color assigned to it, you can't really do that. 
it's so gotta be wet. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we'll use this one. That's one I'd have to think because it's almost like with you can those change patterns there. So, so if you start with a colored image, then you can change it. Yeah, and you can change the saturation. You can change how bright it is, and how dark it is. Ooh, I like that. Um, and that's a Control Shift A, probably Command Shift A for a Mac. Uh, that's one way. Earlier, I was showing someone how to make uh, gradients with overlay, and for that, I would use a a, a soft brush start uh, overlaying it with different colors. And so this that would preserve your, your pattern, and then you can just edit that color layer all you want. And of course, we, can, we don't have to make it super bright colors. We can make it more muted colors as well. But that's, those are a couple options to use. For for a dis, for a desaturated pattern like this, I would probably just recolorize it with like glazing effects. But for a colored pattern, I would oops, uh, I would do the uh, adjust color. I think that's probably the best option. That answered the question, by the way. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> She like that. Okay, I'm going to jump back to something that you showed earlier and just, it's back to the gradient. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that you could show it in a, a blank document? Uh, the gradient tool? Yeah. Sure. Um, let, there's a couple ways to do the gradients. Uh, first, media panels, gradients. So this is where you would save them. There's a ton of gradients here. And this would be one way to do that. All right, create a gradient. Uh, under the paint bucket. The interactive gradient, yeah. Yeah. Um, oops. Why can't I get back to my gradients? Oh, right here. No. There it is. Um, yeah, right there. So this is pretty self-explanatory. You pick this color and you can change it. You pick this color, you change it to whatever you want. You can add color just by clicking on this and just moving it around. And then once you have the gradient you want, you can move these wherever you desire. And you could also auto paint them if you want. Yeah. Um, so there's, and, then, oh, okay. and everything is just, for those of you that want to experiment, the property bar that he's playing with right now has all the options. Yeah. Um, And this was pretty new for Krill, huh? Yes, I want to commit. And now it's going to paint it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it got some starry night kind of painterly feel to it. <clears throat> so I hope that answers the question. Yep. I think okay. that was perfect. I will see if anything else comes in. Thank you. Ah. <sighs>
Wow. Okay, you're going to need a good memory for this. Okay. Joseph is wondering, or maybe not, um, on your website, how did you create the blonde hair where it changes from textured to pixelated? The image on the right, just uh, to learn painter. Uh, I think I know what you're talking about. I've gotten that question a couple times for like a sketch I did way back when. Okay. Um, a long time, hours. <laughs> no, uh, for that, I probably just made selections. So, you know, you, oops, you draw your hair. And then, you know, just make a selection. And then you could put a gradient in that selection if you really want. And that's pretty much the it. Um, that's all I did. Okay. I'll see if Joseph has anything else to say. And then Cindy is wondering, first of all, we haven't mentioned what drawing tablet you're using today. Today I am using a Wacom Cintiq. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. But and <laughs> did you, she's wondering, did you have a huge learning curve? And this is really a personal thing. I know some people can pick up a drawing tablet quickly. Um, Cintiq is probably easier for most people, but what do you think, Brian? There's no learning curve. I think it's uh, the, uh, there's a couple types of tablets. There's one that you put on your desk and you're not actually drawing on the tablet. And that's the one a lot of people get scared of. Uh, that's the one I got scared of, but you pick it up super fast. Like it's really intuitive. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. And then, of course, with the graphics tablet, you draw directly on the screen, like what I'm using. Uh, I mean, you're drawing on the screen there. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. easy. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to get messed up there. But the one that it's, it can either, Cindy, just for some background on it, um, and I always use Wacom tablets or other tablet manufacturers. Um, I consider Wacom to be the best on the market. But one you could plug in via USB, and it's the one that he's talking about that's separate where you're not painting on the screen. It's either plug in via USB or it's wireless, and you're looking at your screen and you're painting on the tablet that's either sitting on your lap or sitting on your workstation. Um, so you're not seeing your artwork displayed on the tablet, and some people it takes a little getting used to. It's It really depends on the person. But in the end, you'll get the hang of whichever one you're, you're trying to use. I don't think you will ever not be able to overcome getting used to it. I think you're going you're gonna to kill it. You're going to do just fine. <laughs> Oh, Joseph is asking, have your textures finally been released? And yes, they have. Did I tell you that, Brian? Yes, you did, because I got okay. a bunch of emails after that yep. webinar. Yeah, yeah. Webinar. I'm sorry about all the emails, guys, mm -hmm. because we sent the follow-up to the webinar, and then I had to email separately. And then I forgot to add the link to Brian's webinar, so totally my fault. I was multitasking and messed it up, so I apologize for all that. Um, but his textures are avail available right from the welcome screen in the product right now, and you all received a 10% discount on that, which we don't usually do because they're brand new. Um, Mandy and everybody else, I there is not actually a direct link, so if you have a painter product, if you go to help, welcome screen, you will see them right within the screen there. And Brian's textures are 
um, geometry and organic. Yeah. Uh, had a lot they're of, very cool. Had a lot of fun making them. <laughs> and I'll just throw that into, I'll send that to you guys in the questions panel so they have that right now. You guys are very quiet today. <laughs> well, I, I'm not. In, I don't think I'm inspiring conversation. I, when I get when I start painting, you know, I just I zone out, and uh, then I get. Oh back no, to it's reality. not you. It's, <laughs> some days the audience is just quieter than others. Um, oh, I know. I missed a question from earlier. Somebody was wondering if you had any kind of image inspiration for what you're drawing right now or are you just doing this from imagination yeah there's um just uh shiva it's just shiva this is a okay. there are many images of shiva one of them is the story i was talking about earlier where he's stepping and dancing on a a demon of spiritual ignorance there's a specific name for it uh it's shiva uh, something I, don't know, I can't even pronounce it. I'm sorry. I'm spiritually ignorant. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, you, there's there's lots of images of this. And now, it, in Painter, would there be a way to bring in your image inspiration to work yep, from? Absolutely. Uh, oops. I like Pinterest. I love Pinterest. I spend way too much time on Pinterest. Um, am I logged in? Yes, I am. So I think I even made a mood board. Yeah, here we go. Oop, I don't want to close. No, no, no. Um, I just wanted to move this. So this is the pose I was inspired by right here. Um, so if I really want to, I think, can you copy and paste in, in here? Yes, you can. So yeah, all you do, if it's online, copy, you paste it. And there's my reference, I truly desire. Uh, I don't want to auto-select the layer. And then, <clears throat> We can take this and blow it up with the transform right here. It's just a little bigger, holding shift, of course, to constrain the proportions. And that's usually what I do. So now I have this, but of course it's in a different position. So uh, we can flip it. There we go. And so this is great reference because when I want to move down to this the foot area, I can start expanding the canvas and I can start painting all this, I can paint all this around here. You still there, Tanya? Uh oh, I'm on air. Is Tanya there? No, oh, I'm here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I was trying to answer some questions here. Oh, no worries, no worries. Um, is there a, Leonard is wondering if there's an easy way to zoom in and out so that you can fill the whole screen. He's on a Cintiq as well. Zoom in and out so you can fill the whole screen or see the whole screen? Mm-hmm. 
uh, you can do, I usually do control and then the minus or plus. Control yeah. plus, control minus, that's what I do. Uh, if you have a mouse, you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Yeah, you could also um, pinch, zoom in, zoom out, rotate the canvas. There's all kinds of ways to do yeah. it. And then, yeah, the screen, it's like next level. Yeah, I don't know the um, the quick keys, but if you have the magnifying glass selected on the property bar, I think if you hover over items, it should show you also the yes. keyboard commands. All yeah. kinds of ways to do that. Uh, so you can actually bind the magnifying glass to something you like and then just zoom in and out. And I use spacebar to move it around and then zoom in, move it around, zoom out. Yeah. Do you happen, I know that I didn't hand back over to you the final paper texture packs, but would you be able to show everybody how you would bring in textures? I don't know if you have anything sure. external. Yeah. Um, I have my own Corel. Okay, good. Right there, and I want to say it's right here, and uh, that are those are the source images. Yeah, so when you download them, all you do is click on them. The oh, file cannot reopen. Woo! No, uh, I think yeah, I think you have so to do it from the panel okay. itself. So we can uh, import then uh, import paper library, and then you find it. Test geo, sure. And there we go. There it is. And now we can enjoy our paper textures on a different layer, of course. Easy peasy. So this it's a little bit different than the brushes because those you just double click and they install with these. It'll go onto your desktop and you do what Brian just showed. You just click from the library manager and you import them. And we'll have instructions for those that come with the palette itself. Or the library, I should say. I love that and, pattern. Yeah, these are some of patterns that I made. <laughs> or if you get those patterns, this is one of them that you'll get. I think this is the organic. Yes, it's the organic. So cool. Do you ever, do you use the image hose ever versus a pattern pen? Yes, absolutely. Um, I don't know if I have any. Oh, yes, I should have butterfly. Um, yeah, I use them sometimes. I that uh, that one that we did at the end of the year, 2019. I used it for a butterfly. Mm, right. Okay. Uh, so down to. Oh, I'm sorry. Media uh, panels. Yeah, nozzles. Nozzles, yeah. Oh, my butterflies aren't in here. Yeah. That's okay. When you upload them, it's the same deal uh, to import them as a paper. Uh, load nozzle. Oh, yeah, my little butterflies. Got everything on that desktop. Uh-huh. <laughs> Now we can have butterflies. Yeah, I haven't played with the uh, the nozzle or the image hose as much recently. Um, around uh, 2014, when uh, or 2015, when I was the the when I was first a painter master, I realized uh, how much I wanted to learn how to paint better. <laughs> So a lot of what I was doing in Corel at the time was 
like patterns and collaging and image hose and um, <clears throat> I just really wanted to focus in on learning to to just solve all my issues with painting just a brush. Oh gosh, now people are wondering, well, how did you create the fractals? And <laughs> um, I don't know if you created them in Painter or elsewhere. Uh, the fractals I created in Photoshop. I, uh, because you can take one little tiny circle and then you can fractal it out really fast. There is uh -huh. a fractal creator in Painter as well which is not something I don't think that we've talked about in years and years, but um, just so you guys know, it Actually, is in was there. It, it was a tree, right? It was a tree, and it, you can give it different parameters, right? Yeah. Is that still and in? And there's a, um, not the, maybe it is the kaleidoscope. There's a mosaic tool. There's all kinds of interesting, crazy, there's a maze pattern maker. Yeah. Painter's uh, pretty deep. I I miss that um that tree, that, that fractal tree. I can't I don't think it's in painter anymore. It's in No, paint. it is. It's in there. I can find it in painter uh twenty twelve. You know what? I'll I'll have to off the top of my head here. Let me see if I can find it. Um <laughs> And then Michelle Webb was asking just about your texture packs. So, Michelle, they are two different packs. One is geometry and one is organic. Yes. And they should both show up in the welcome screen, along with a bunch of other, we release some other packs as well. I just want to make sure I know we're we're already getting to the top of the hour here, so I want to make sure I've addressed everybody's questions. Let's see. This fractal, however, was made in a software that most artists don't like. It's called Electric Sheep, and um, you don't paint at all on it. You just set mathematical parameters. And then you see what happens. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Um, so do you always paint in color or do you ever start in grayscale and then convert to color later? I'll, this is It's really rare that I have a monotone uh, painting. I always start with color. I typically like RGB. <laughs> Unless the client... Uh, Want something different? Kathleen is now wondering how do you actually create and save textures? Easy. So let's say we want to make this a texture. This image we're looking at right here. First we want it on one layer. It's going to be this layer. And let's select the entire image. Control or Command A. And we want to capture... Oops, we have to put it to the canvas. I'm sorry. And let's make this canvas white actually. Um, by doing control F. Let's just make it white. Let's make this part of canvas. So now we're going to capture the paper. We'll call it the. And now it's loading up. And our paper is right there. So let's try it out. And remember, you have to use a dry brush. 
for a watercolor brush? Use, yes, use. anything that expresses texture soaks in or yeah, bumps like, it up. As you know, like a natural media would. And I just want to clarify to everybody, I have not said that we're coming out with an iPad version of Painter. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tiny. <laughs> I, I, uh, man, hopefully no one here is a journalist and is going to say, Painter or iPad confirmed. Okay, I'm going to do one last little scroll through. So everybody who's on here, if you have any pressing questions, okay, Mary. Um, she's reminding me. How do you copy a color palette from an image so you get exact color? Uh, was she the one that asked that question before? No, I don't think she was. Um, there's actually a way to where you can literally make the image the color palette. Um, and you know what? I can follow up with this one. I can send steps to the couple of people that are very curious. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that typically I just use eyedropper, but if you really want to just make a palette, like boom, like instantly. Yep, yep. I'll, I'll tell you how to do a color set or capture it as an image that shows up in the mixer pad. So I will write that down as a follow-up right now. All right. Now we're just. Okay. Thinking. So I think uh, I think that is the last one that. I can follow up with um, anything else. Speak now. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for hanging out with us, guys. I appreciate you tuning in, and I hope you have fun with your Corel Painter, and you can email me through my site if you have any questions. I will try to get to them when I can. I mean, uh, I'm still just, you know, mostly staying at home, so. Yeah, I think you did a great job. I think we have we got to everything except for the color palette questions. I will follow up with those. And once again, thank you so much, guys, for spending time with us today. Um, we have a webinar set up for next month with Mike Thompson. I now have the registration link, so I will forward that off to you along with the recording for this session in case you want to watch it again and the answer to the color palette questions. So thanks, Brian. I really mm -hmm. appreciate this. No worries. <laughs> and happy okay. Easter, everybody. I, I think everybody's probably at home, but I wish you the best. Stay happy and healthy and keep painting. We will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bye. All right. Bye, everybody.